for whoever made this. Way too fast of a, of a text, at least. Um, way too fast. Um, I'll be right back, ladies and gentlemen. I'm just gonna edit the options a little bit, and then we'll get started. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back already. God withdrew his blessings from the land of Latori. Hmm. Oh, okay. So it's... I need to click. I thought it was just going to continue whenever I needed to. Okay. Uh... Yeah. Without those blessings, the prosperity of the past faded into legend. The people of Latori were finally free to shape their own destinies. That's kind of good, I guess. I mean, it depends on how you look at it, really. But their freedom came at a price of hardships they never could imagine. Exactly. That's what I meant by how you look at it. I mean, um, I, I've started reading this, I guess you could call it an anime technically. I mean, not an anime, but a manga. But it's really more of like a total novel, but in a manga style setting sort of thing. And basically... You know, the gods were like, were jealous of humans, so they came down to our world and decided to not use their powers to influence themselves. And they actually have to work for money and whatnot. Even though they, people know that they're gods, they want to be treated equal. It's kind of interesting. Order broke down, morality deteriorated, and the chaos that followed, paradise was lost. Well, I mean, you gotta work. Final result was an endless war. Why does everything have to end with war? Seriously. Latori is now split into two primary rivals. The northern section of the continent is ruled by the United Prince Principality of Vasitali? I don't know. The Empire of Solantia dominates the southern lands. I'm just going to call it the Prince and the Empire, quite frankly. Whenever that pops up, because I don't want to have to continue trying to say those names. Mind you, this is all Japanese-based game, so. The wars between these two superpowers and their smaller neighbors never end. Emperor Para. Kaku, I don't know, ruler of Salantia, sits in his palace and schemes to restore his people's faith in God by extending his border to cover all of Latoy. That's why we don't want kings or emperors or whatever. The hero of the people, Iri, Irel Reis, is the nephew of the emperor and a genius tactician. We need him to be the king. He conquers countless lands in the name of Slangia, the Emperor and God. He's probably only doing that because the Emperor tells him to. Just saying. Because of Irel's success, his uncle plans gradually bear fruit and Slangia's army conquers its neighbors, the people's faith in God and their Emperor's divine right to rule grows stronger. Great. With each victory, Irel's fame spreads. Eventually, the entire world stands in awe of his town and Salentia's might. He, he's renowned in skill, brings a gradual change to a toy. With each kingdom that is conquered or surrenders to the gifted young general, hope for an end to the madness of war grows stronger. <sighs> when you do something like this, you know, just conquering kingdoms without regard for the people there. Wow, there's already dust on the computer. I should probably dust that. Um, sorry about that. I mean, I literally just bought this computer probably two months ago, if that. But, um, <laughs> you know. It was an expensive computer, so I'm kind of concerned about it already. But, um, 
whenever you do something like this, just conquering people instead of asking to help them and ask them for help, there's always going to be a rebellion, and that means the war is not going to end, quite frankly. Finally, all believe that the total victory is within the man's reach. No one who came before him ever succeeded in uniting so much of a toy, except for before the war. The only principle, the only remaining opposition to the Empire is the greatest rival, the United Principality of Thess, Thess Toy. At the Emperor, Emperor's command, Irel Rice returns his gaze toward northward and marches on Restoy. Victory after victory convinces the world that not only is the man a genius, but he has the blessing of God upon him. Great. So now he's God's messenger, apparently. Even the strongest fortress in all of Latoy, the pride of best toy, is no match for his tactical cunning. One by one, Festoy's defenses fall, its southern borders shrink in conjunction with Silentia expanding northern border. Until at last, Irel's army, Irel Rez's army, stands at the gate of Festoy's capital. This will be the last battle. Great. Night has fallen. Unable to sleep, Irel Reyes whittles away the night, staring at the enemy's last fortress and plotting its demise. General, you are going for a walk? Yes, this will be the final battle. Can't leave anything to chance. I must go be alone to think. I must be sure I haven't missed even the slightest detail. Sir, please allow me to accompany you. Yes, please! Someone, come to me! I will be fine alone. Great. But sir, the scouts have reported that small group, the small groups of enemy troops are still patrolling these woods. Exactly. I have no need for you. I will call. Until then, stay at your post, soldier. I... Yes, sir. I agree with the guard, quite frankly. After bidding the look, lookouts goodnight, I walk up the hill behind the campsite. Out here without the campfires to ruin my night vision, the sky is filled with stars. As I stand quietly and gaze up at the star sky, I hear a muffled noise from a nearby bush. Who goes there? Under the dim starlight, a slim figure jumps out from the bush and flees to the north. You! Halt! I rush forward. Reaching out, I manage to grasp a shoulder. Please, I'm just a refugee. I don't have anything of value, just left to steal. Please, don't kill me. You're a civilian? A refugee, you say? Thousands have been displaced by the hardships of war. Exactly why war should not happen. I mean, seriously, nowadays with video games and whatnot, why can't we just make a simulation? Seriously, that way we don't actually lose people, and we don't actually have to worry about civilian casualties we can just do a bloody video game of the war and boom whoever wins wins you know best out of ten done <sighs> this war this woman is obviously one of them her voice is hoarse with the kind of terror that can't be faked what brought you here <laughs> That ladies and gentlemen, um, I just drank a little bit of basically ice water that was soured with a lemon overnight. Ooh. Do not try that. Trust me, it's not good. So I have an aftertaste on my tongue. Ooh. I, I'm just fleeing from the war. I don't even know where here is. I just keep running northward. My home was destroyed again. This is what war does. I'm just trying to find a place where it's safe to hide. You don't have to be afraid. I am a soldier and I will not harm you. Soldier? Praise God! The army of Bessetia has finally arrived to save its people. Oh shit. No, I'm a soldier of 
tan. Looking more closely at the woman with her torn, dirty clothes and her early signs of malnourishment, I can't help but be aware that the Khatian army has cost the people of it this country. I'm not even to bother saying it. Fear not, we do not harm civilians. Bastards! You're all bastards! You already destroyed our homes! Now you're saying that you won't harm us? Isn't it a little late for that? The woman shouting is growing increasingly hysterical. Her voice is filled with all her hatred, helplessness, and hopelessness. It's all your fault. All because of you and that emperor of yours. She throws herself at me with a wild abandon. She has no regard for her own safety. <laughs> hug her. Seriously, I would hug her. Journal, watch out. Oh god. Oh god. The woman is still charging. Is still clinging to my uniform. The guard pierces her body with his sword just as she shouts this morning. God damn it, guard. At least wait a second, will ya? When the guard heard the woman sharding, he rushed to me, my aid, stabbing her in the back. Now he pulls his sword out, pushing her away from me at the same time. General, are you alright? I'm fine. She was just... Huh? She grabbed my ankle, her fingernails cutting through the cloth and biting into my skin. So much pain for such a small amount of for such a small injury. She murmurs resentfully, and I can't make out what she is trying to say to me. Ha, not dead yet. Cut her head off, please. I'm not saying that because I'm angry at her. I'm saying that so that he, her pain stops. With a curse, the guard swings the sword. Her hand still grasping my ankle is separated from her arm. At the wrist, the guard continues to hack away at her body with his sword. It's not safe here. Please return to the camp and rest your own. There's nothing left for me here. Alas, alright, I'll go back. Stars. Why can't I see the stars anymore? I'm already depressed. And it's just the beginning of the damn game. Jeez. Did you have to start out the game this depressing? Seriously. The dark of the night has given away to dawn. The sun hasn't risen yet risen when Irel Rez commands his army to approach with the set's last line of defense. No offense to the Emperor or the maker of this game, or to Irel Rez if he's a real person or who he's based off of. But I would be like, you know what? Screw this. My guys aren't gonna listen to me my emperor has told me to do this I'm leaving I don't care if I'm a damn traitor I'm leaving seriously I would leave <sighs> sorry but I mean when I was younger and playing video games yes I would go around killing random people because I thought it was funny you know being able to kill someone and not having to worry about dying because someone else could kill me as well. That was kind of fun. I'll admit it. But mind you, that was only in video games. In real life, if I saw someone getting hurt, I would try to stop that. And now, as I've grown, I try to protect the people. Like, you know, as I said when I was younger, you know, if a vampire attacked in Skyrim, I'm like, meh, I'll just sit here and sit back and watch the innocent people die. Now, I'm, I'm like, no, I need to protect them. Even if they're not my friends, they're still civilians, and I'm supposed to be a hero. I need to protect the civilians. That's who I am. <sighs> well, next thing. Together, they face one of the most famous strongholds in all of Latoy. Gerolberg. Ha, Gerolberg. If you don't get that historic reference, that's a... I'm pretty sure this is a United States reference. Gettysburg. That's just me. Um, at the end of this, I'm actually gonna put a little quote of a famous... of someone's famous last words. Because I know I have... I have a book called Famous Last Words. 
and something else. I forget what it, I forget the actual title, but it's literally famous last words and like some of them I forget exactly what exactly they all say, but one of them is like, I've had a great life. Toast me dying or something like that. Um one of my favorite sayings is actually on my Xbox profile of Chronic I'm Pain. And it's um I, I believe it was live fast, die young, leave a good looking body. And that was the famous general. I, I like that. You know, I mean, if you die young, I, I don't know. I mean, it, it doesn't matter if you die young or if, if you die old, as long as you enjoyed your life, really. That's what I got from that quote. So, sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. My dad rudely interrupted <sighs> Okay, well, next one. The Citadel stands in the way of any force trying to move further north. The capital will signal the total defeat of the United Principle of Principality of Basitaya and complete unification of the toy. General Rice has positioned Command Tent his offer and his officers on the high ground. From there, they can observe the enemy troops and the coming battle. As the sun rises, the general, young general strains to catch the first glimpse beyond the castle's wall, walls. Um, quick little note. Um, I don't know if you're, if any of you are old enough for this, but uh, there were old strategy video games where I think it was um, dang, I can't think of the name. But basically, you know, you know, you take turn. It was sort of stratego, but you couldn't place your pieces wherever you need to place them. It was literally, I mean, I, I, I'm pretty sure they still have these kind of games out there, actually. Um, dang, what's, Civilization, that game. It's sort of, it's like that, except, and when I was younger, I was more of, um, you know, get the tanks, 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 get the tanks. Because I figured, you know, giant damage, giant defense, Defense, best thing to build. Not true. Especially in the beginning. That's why I pretty much always lost. <laughs> I was not a good strategist when I was younger. Um, now that I've grown older, obviously I'm just trying to win-win. You know, I want to win everything instead of just, you know, part of it. So you know, whenever someone in the game asks me to be an ally, I'm like, yeah, sure, why not? You know, and I'll go to defeat pretty much everybody except the smallest guy that isn't my ally. And then I'll go attack my allies. And I'll defeat them. And then I'll go attack the smallest guy because, you know, he's weak. So I just leave him there for, you know, my last guy, whatever's left over, to kill him. Um, but he is shocked by what he sees. The Vesatian nation whose armies, army was thought to be greatly depleted, had somehow managed to fill the castle with thousands of troops. Well, obviously they took all their troops from everywhere else and put them in the castle, which is a very dumb idea, quite frankly. Worse, the banners beyond the castle walls suggest tens of thousands more are waiting to be deployed. Could it be a trick? <laughs> uh, the three... 300 parody. Uh, they took. If you've never even seen that, I'm not going to spoil everything, but basically, the enemy took out a green screen. <laughs> and the Spartans actually thought it was real. It was quite funny, actually. I mean, they saw the green screen come out, and then they just saw randomly the guys randomly appearing. It was really funny. Uh, could it be a trick? It's hard to make out anything beyond the wall other than the banners flying high on their poles, but that. But it's that smoke, campfires, a lot of them. Not likely a trick then. Not really, I mean, you could have a bunch of campfires with one or two guys manning them to make it seem like, you know, there's a lot of campfires. I mean, that's what I would do if I knew I was outnumbered. Never had I route encountered an army of this magnitude before. I have. Well, not really, but, you know, I mean, 
with all my video game playing, I've done very stupid things with my characters because I knew I couldn't die, and you know, I just go in, you know, tanking it. <laughs> like, ah, eh, I'll be fine. For instance, when I was, you know, I, I just wanted to, one time I just wanted to see how much, how little damage the guards could do. So I just went around the entire town attacking civilians and guards, and then the entire town was attacking me. And I just sat there, letting them attack me. And you know, and I would just use my, you know, my base restoration skill, which does very little restoration. And I regen that plus my regeneration of health gave me back the, the health I was losing. So, you know, basically they weren't doing very much damage. And I, I thought that was quite funny. But um, back to the game, shall we? Did best toy conscript all its civilians out of desperation? No offense, but conscript, I'm taking that as draft. You know, like the drafting of people. I mean, it's one thing to draft people that want to be, you know. I mean, it's one thing to draft people and then ask them, do you want to be a soldier? Or will you fight for your country more or less? You know, that's one thing. You know, draft them, train them, and then ask them, will you fight for your country? If they still say no, then okay. You know, have them do something in the background at least. You know, don't make them go onto the front line. That's one thing to do, quite frankly. That's just my, my personal opinion. I still think, I mean, up here in the top left corner, I think it says 30 on my... I'm... Perhaps it's freaking out quite frankly. It either says 230, 130, or just 30. And either way, I know the max frame rate should be 60, so I'm taking a guess and saying it's freaking out here. And it says 30. But I don't know. Um, they're, fi they're fighting a battle of for survival. An animal is most dangerous when it's cornered. That is true. Also when it's slightly hurt. His opponent seems to be betting everything on one last desperate act. Iroh is silent for some time, deciding what this means for his chances of victory while observing the train, contemplating action and counter action. Do we have archers? Do we have explosives? I mean, no offense, I'm just thinking that of this from his point of view. I mean, you know, do we have um, a catapult? Do we have explosives that we can put in the catapult? I mean, seriously. It's pretty easy, actually. Just go up there with archers and shields. You know, two men, two men um, parties of archers. One guy with a shield, one guy with a bow. Have the shield guy crouch down so that the bow guy can have a bunch of protection while being able to shoot over the shield. And whenever arrows come in, duck down behind the shield, not having to worry about the arrows. Done. Explosives, same thing. You know, well I mean you would only have to have a one man team. Throw the explosive over the shield. Blast me. It looks like enemy troops have arms out numbers, he thinks to himself. I rally, this is going to be a hard fight either way. Nothing can, he can think of will overrun such great odds. What did I just say? I mean, seriously. Send in the heavy armor guys. Have them start at the front. And, you know, sort of get some guys away from the front. Then send in the archers with the shields. Have them go in on top. That's why the heavy armors would push them the enemy back a little bit, that way they can get up on top of the walls, and they can shoot from there, helping the heavy armors, sending the grenaders behind the heavy armors to help, one, aid the heavy, heavy armors when, if someone gets behind them or anything, and two, to throw grenades over the heavy, heavy armors. <sighs> I mean, seriously, it's not like you throw, it's not like you send in a tank by itself to find an army. 
The enemy is opening the castle gate. They're coming out to fight us. Right there. Bottle knock them. On rel size. Too late to back down now. Too late for regrets. Irel descends from his command post, joining his troops. He takes a place at the front of the army and draws a sword. If I would have personally fought Irel and I would have known that there was a castle gate, you know, go up there during the night, hang something in front of the gate, and then start digging a hole <laughs> in front of the gate and cover it with leaves and whatnot. You know, perfect. <laughs> People start falling into the hole, dying, man. That would be perfect. Listen up, men. This will be our last battle. Great. We, we, if we survive, we can actually go home and kiss our wives, finally. I want you to remember that no bastard ever won a war by dying for his country. He won it by making the other poor dumb bastard die for his country. <sighs> Personally, I would have said no bastard ever won a war by dying for his country. He died for his, for the honor of his country. No, he died to protect his family and the ones he loves. That's what I would have said. I mean, that's gonna really integrate them. I want each of you to fight bravely, but more than that, I want each of you to survive. Our goal is to return home. Okay, a little bit better, I guess. Although that should have been, although they should have been crippled, the Seti somehow managed to muster a seemingly endless supply of troops for the final battle. Bottle neck them! Seriously, they have only one exit to come out of. Irel brought all his tactical skill to bear on the disaster, shifting strategies and almost known to stem the tide. Wow. Well, honestly, you're not doing a great job. Although his success and successful in repelling countless waves of attackers, the outcome of the battle was clear to him from the start. He's gonna lose. After more than a month of bloodshed, the siege of Carlberg, Carlberg. I thought that was a C there. I mean, you know. Personally, I'll make the text a little bit bigger, easier to read. Uh. So, ended in defeat of Irel Rez. What was left of Slenchia's once proud army returned home, not in glorious victory as they, the, their empire expected, but hounded by the shame of defeat. I'm thinking about switching out my wireless mouse with a wired mouse because, I mean, I just switched out the battery and I'm still having a little bit of lag with it. I don't know, if this can really continue, so I probably would. He'll switch out. I'm not sure. Irel, badly injured in the fight, was carried back to the capital by his subordinates. At the same time, the news of his failure was spread across the toy. It didn't take long for the fragile piece of piece Irel had carved with steel to evolve into madness. The toy had become a custom to the smaller countries that had once surrendered rose in rebellion. Exactly. I said that earlier. There's always going to be a rebellion. Once more. Many feudal lords, hungry for their share of the now crippled empire, began to carve out new kingdoms as well. The nobility of Sanchel condemned Irel. Really? There were calls daily for the emperor to execute their once beloved hero. Why not condemn? Well, I guess you can't really condemn the emperor. But I mean, seriously, it's not his fault. The Emperor told him to. But Emperor Pekko ignored the will of his nobles. Thank you! Through a combination of political and so social maneuvering, he claimed to calm their bloodlust. He publicly denounced Irel, stripped him of his titles, and relieved him of command. Mm. Finally, he exiled his nephew from the capital so that over time people would forget their failed general. Does this mean I can come back eventually? Because if so, then yes. I'm okay with this. If not, I would rather be dead. No offense. 
Three years go by and then the Emperor summons Irel to the palace camp. Wow, this place is fancy. Irel Rez, what do you have to say for your failure at Bassette Your Grace, I only ask for mercy towards the soldiers who, who fled the field of battle. Our failure at Garelberg was my fault. I did my best, but it wasn't enough. Do you really think remi reminding me of that your best is just just wasn't good enough will help your cause now? Probably not. Please, Grace, I'm willing to sacrifice myself in exchange for your forgiveness towards my former soldiers. Not like I wrote. Did it come as a as quite a shock, didn't it? I read. I read the reports. The sete should have been on its last legs, but I digress. Sorry about this. I just thought I might have missed something there. Um, it does not matter how well our armies have recovered. Nothing can undo the, the disaster that befell them three years ago. All that matters here and now is that my people have shed their blood on their land of heretics. Their souls will find no rest there. This is a heavy burden, and it is yours to bear. I have to agree with that, probably. Okay, yeah. I'm doing like round. Where the heck's my question? There it is. Yeah, I'm getting some lag here. I'm getting like almost 50 frames. 45 to 50 frames right now. So yeah, I think I was at 30 frames a second ago. Uh, their soul. Okay, this is having burden. Yeah, yeah. I have prepared myself. So basically, they're not going to Sagan Valley. Going up to their ancestors and whatnot. Which is kind of why I like the, um, the Dragon Age version of the dwarves. Because personally, I like them. Um, they're not technologically advanced or anything, but they believe that their ancestors are still with them. You know, they, their ancestors are here, helping them. Continuing to help them push forward. Are you prepared? Your execution will not compensate me for the loss, but nor will it help your souls find peace. The annual miracle play will be upon us soon. I will let you arrange it this year. Your involvement should pacify the souls of the soldiers who died so far from home. But what? I mean, your grace? <laughs> you will go to my garden. There are seven princesses there who will act with you in the play. Okay. Pre Care of them. But be warned, Irel, do not forget your station once more inside this garden. I am your humble servant. I will not break your trust again, your grace. Quick question. Are they his daughters or are they just princesses that he wants to marry? Because I mean if they're his daughters, that's one thing. But the princesses that he wants to marry, that's another. And by that I mean, you know, daughter. You kind of have to respect that. Princesses that he wants to marry, not so much. I mean, it's not like he's your friend or anything, so you can't really enact the bro code, which basically says, you know, you don't try to, you don't help her, your friend's girlfriend cheat on him by ch cheating on him with her, you know what I mean? Um, and if they break up, you at the very least ask if it's okay to date her, instead of just going and dating her. I mean, it's not like that you, I mean, even if they say no, you can still date them. Although, depending on who they are, you might not want to. So they might be anger prone. But, me personally, yeah, I don't want to mind that. I mean, it's just a show of respect, by the way. Uh, I'm sure I look look as despondent as I feel after the audience with the Emperor. I have been given an opportunity to redeem myself, but not in any situation I'm familiar with. One of the princesses among the seven is the Emperor's concubine, likely to whisper my every move right into the into Pecori's ear. Either that means daughter or to be wife. The prison is called the Oblivious Garden. 
This prison is called Olivia's Gun. My bad. Those who live inside it are required to forget their past and become them first loyal pets. Oblivious past, oblivious to the outside world, living only in the present, just says the name applies. Wow. I will allow it to change will I allow it to change me like that? Eh, it depends. There's probably no way to salvage the rune I have made of a toy. After I enter the garden there won't be any hope of salvaging myself either. Well that's for me to decide, apparently. Not him. Um, but if the Emperor says that performing the miracle play will give peace to the rest of the souls of my men, I will do it. If there is a God watching over this land, over this country, watching me, I pray that you bestow my, your blessings upon us all. But most importantly, I pray that you leave my fallen soldiers along with those who have died in the endless wars in peace. If the miracle play will bring them peace, then I must fulfill my duty with honor. With newfound determination in my heart and resolve in my mind, I open the gates to the garden and step inside. And ladies and gentlemen, this is where we're going to end it for today. I will see you next time.